Hey, I'm Rob Witcher from Destination Certification, and I'm here to help you pass the CISSP exam. We're going to go through a review of the major topics related to single sign-on and federated identity management in Domain 5 to understand how they interrelate and to guide your studies. This is the second of two videos for Domain 5. I've included links to the other mind map videos in the description below. These mind maps are one part of our complete CISSP masterclass. Single sign-on and federated identity management are both about allowing users to access multiple systems with a single set of credentials. Users love this, as they need to only remember one terrible password instead of multiple terrible passwords, and they only need to authenticate once to magically get access to all their applications. Single sign-on protocols and systems are designed to work within one organization. A major protocol that enables single sign-on is Kerberos. Kerberos enables authentication via tickets over an insecure network. Kerberos is a very complicated protocol that is very flexible and as such has a lot of components. The first component, or rather person, is the user or client. This is the individual that would like to gain access to services through Kerberos. Kerberos provides two services, the authentication service and the ticket granting service, both of which are contained within what is known as the key distribution center, the KDC. When a user attempts to access a service via Kerberos, they first need to authenticate through the authentication service. The, the authentication service will check that the user exists and if so, will send the user two tickets, one of which is known as the ticket granting ticket, the TGT. The ticket granting ticket is then passed on to the next component within the KDC, the ticket granting service, along with a couple of other messages from the client indicating what service the client wants to access. The ticket granting service will check that the service exists and if the user is authorized to access the service. And if so, the TGS, the ticket granting service, will create a service ticket and send that back to the user. The service ticket is now finally what the user sends to the application in order to get access to the application. The user also caches the service ticket for any future access to the application while the ticket is valid and has not yet expired. The final piece worth mentioning here related to Kerberos is that by default, it only supports symmetric key cryptography. This is a very significant limitation, as quite a few symmetric keys need to be created and securely distributed amongst the components. By the way, I've created a super detailed video explaining Kerberos, which I'll link to in the description, but you don't need to watch it for the CISSP exam. You just need to know this high-level overview. But if you want a deep dive, it's there for you. There's a second protocol that enables single sign-on capabilities that you should know just a tiny bit about. It's known as Sesame, as in Open Sesame. Sesame supports not just symmetric cryptography, but also asymmetric, solving the major symmetric key cryptography problems, scalability, and key distribution. Now let's talk about federated access. From a user's perspective, it looks exactly like single sign-on. The user enters one set of credentials, and then they magically get access to a bunch of different applications. The key difference is that in federated access, users can access systems not just internal applications, but also externally managed applications. Think access to a SaaS application in the cloud. Federated access relies on a trust relationship between three different entities, the user, the identity provider, and the service provider. Essentially, the service provider needs to trust the authentication that is being performed by the identity provider in order to authorize the user to access the service. Let's dig into these three entities. The first is the user, sometimes also referred to as the principal. The identity provider is the entity that authenticates the user, verifies the user's identity by authentication by knowledge, ownership, or characteristic. In many organizations, the identity provider will be something like Active Directory. The service provider, also sometimes referred to as the relying party, is what the user wants to access. The service provider is often not an application owned by the organization, but rather an application owned and managed by a vendor. Again, think of a SaaS application that so many of us access through work nowadays for submitting help desk tickets, booking travel, entering expenses, etc. There are a number of different protocols that enable federated access. The major one that you need to know about is SAML the security assertion markup language. As we talked about, Kerberos relies on sending tickets. SAML does the same thing, but doesn't call them tickets, they are rather called tokens. 
these tokens contain assertion statements. Things like the user ID, service ID, the timestamp, and lifetime of the token, etc. Assertion statements contained within a token are written in XML, the extensible markup language. SAML was designed to be used for many different use cases. As such, it is made up of a number of different components that make it flexible and adaptable. Profiles define how SAML can be used for different business use cases, such as web single sign-on or through LDAP. Bindings map SAML onto different communication protocols. For example, HTTP, allowing SAML to communicate across different types of networks. The protocol component within SAML defines how entities send and respond to requests. And finally, the assertion component defines the authentication, authorization, and other such attributes. There are three more protocols that you should recognize as being federated access protocols. WS Federation, which provides both authentication and authorization capabilities. OpenID, which provides authentication, and OAuth, which provides authorization capabilities. All right, and that is an overview of single sign-on and federated access within Domain 5, covering the most critical concepts that you need to know for the exam. Have you checked out our CISSP guidebook yet? You should. It's awesome. <laughs> In my completely unbiased opinion, as one of the authors, we explain all these single sign-on and federated entity management protocols with super helpful diagrams. You can see why our guidebook is awesome here at deskcert.com forward slash CISP guide.